Welcome to Spiritual Fizz, connecting the spiritual and physical worlds for mindful listeners. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Russell Sareff, and thank you for joining the Spiritual Fizz podcast. In this episode, you'll hear about newsworthy events that have a spiritual nature to them. Then we'll take a visit to an ancient spiritual place on Earth. Today we'll travel to southern Ohio, where archaeologists have discovered a huge sacred mound in the shape of a giant serpent that dates back to 300 BC. This serpent mound is a Native American creation and another example of the spiritualism that those ancient people celebrated. After our visit, we'll talk with our featured guest, Amira Hall. She's an international best-selling author, speaker, intuitive channel, and spiritual counselor. We'll be speaking with Amira about her unique work and her spiritual insights. Before we get to all of those, we have a short reflection on our spiritual life. When I consider the size of the physical world around us and the vastness of the universe, I see enormous, uncharted opportunities to discover connections with our spiritual world. I imagine these connections to be as numerous and endless as the vast universe itself. Sometimes I just want to be one with the universe. I want to reach out my arms in the night sky and hold on to the stars. I'll pull myself up and insinuate myself into their delicate balance. I'll watch their immeasurable movements in a slow motion waltz. And I'll move with them. We will move together with nimble turns in their timeless dance and I will shine. Here's the news on Spiritual Fizz. We have some interesting spiritual events coming up soon on the calendar. His Holiness Pope Francis will be going to Rome's Piazza di Spagna for the traditional act of veneration of the Immaculate Conception on December 8th. His Holiness the Dalai Lama will give a three-day teaching on sutras on January 5th, 6th, and 7th in Bodhgaya, India. Here's an interesting event coming up. The Fairy and Earth Festival will be on December 8th, 9th, and 10th in Brooksville, Florida, where there will be entertainment and education for all ages. There will be journeys into nature and search for evidence of the fairy realm, nature spirits, and other aspects of the natural world. Connect with the flowers, trees, wind, water, and other elements of nature, and learn to appreciate and thank all aspects of our natural world. We have a couple of important spiritual observations coming up soon. Maulid is the celebration on December 1st of the birthday of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. It's observed in almost all Islamic countries and in other countries that have a significant Muslim population like India, the UK, Nigeria, and Nepal. The first day of Advent is December 3rd and begins the Advent season, which is observed in many Christian churches as a time of waiting and preparation for the celebration of the birth of Jesus. That's our news segment for this episode. In our next episode, we'll find out even more about the people and events in our spiritual world. Let's journey to another spiritual place. Archaeologists have discovered a large serpent in southern Ohio that dates back to 300 BC. But it's not a real serpent. Actually, 
It's a huge sacred mound that was used thousands of years ago. This serpent mound is a Native American creation and another example of the spiritualism that those ancient people celebrated. The Great Serpent Mound is three feet high and winds through a grassy hillside for 1,300 feet. Pointing to the north, it's the largest effigy of a serpent in the entire world. The U.S. government has designated it as a National Historic Landmark. Located in the Ohio Valley, this site has been excavated many times since the 1800s, and the most recent dating of the mound shows that it was built around 300 BC. Based on that time frame, the mound was built by people from the Adena culture. These are Native Americans who lived throughout the area that we know today as Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, and other nearby states. They shared similar beliefs, which can be seen today from the similar burial and ceremonial structures that they used. In addition to the mound, archaeologists have identified graves at the Serpent Mound that originate from that Adena period. Some researchers believe that the purpose of the mound was to show the spirits from those graves the direction northward. There's also evidence that the mound is connected to the seasons. Some people suggest that the serpent's head is aligned to the summer solstice and that the coils of the serpent point to the winter solstice and to the equinox. It's so amazing to me that these ancient sites still exist today, and what's maybe even more amazing is that some of them are actually in our own backyard. Now we'll hear from our featured guest on the Spiritual Fizz show. And I I remember asking, where am I? And this voice said to me, this is the fabric of all creation. This is love. That was Amira Hall. She's an international best-selling author, speaker, intuitive channel, and spiritual counselor. Amira is the author of three books, Wake Up, Shift Happens, Love Up Your Life, 10 Quick and Easy Steps Using Science of Attraction Principles, and Manifesting Miracles 101, The Art of Being in the Flow. Those books serve as the foundation of her unique and powerful work. We're speaking with Amira today about her spiritual insights. Hello, Amira, and welcome to the Spiritual Fizz Podcast. And thank you so much for inviting me and having me participate in this exciting adventure of yours. <laughs> yes, it is an adventure, and uh, hopefully it will go to a wonderful, beautiful place. Um, but we're just starting off on this path, so we'll, it'll be interesting and to see where it goes. Well, I see the energetic excitement bubbling up around you, so that's really cool. <laughs> thank you. And, you know, one of the reasons why... I wanted to interview you because you have a lot of interesting spiritual insights that you've talked about and discussed in your books. But a lot of those insights from what I've read comes from an interesting experience that you've had. Um, and that was a near death experience. And it seems like all of your work it comes from that. What, what was that? Well, that was, there's how much time do we have? <laughs> Um, it's, it's definitely a journey. That's for sure. You know, um, a lot of people want to hear about the actual event and I often like to reflect on, you know, there was a lead up. It wasn't just the BAM thing event that happened. And I, I want to start with saying in 1997, I started on a journey of trying to find myself or a bigger purpose or what am I here for? And I, I think a lot of people have those questions in their mind. You know, I was struggling with my career. I had sort of met a threshold and then I came crashing down and my dad had died and I was divorced. So there was a lot of life issues that were ongoing that I was dealing with. So in 1997, I started my spiritual journey and I first went to Peru. And it was there in working with a shaman in the jungle that I actually got the vision to go to Egypt. 
Um, and so I embarked on that fantastic journey to Egypt, my first journey in 1998. But in also doing all that, I was doing physical detoxes. I was doing 30-day detoxification programs oh. where I would go on a seven-day fast, juice fast. So I, I believe in hindsight, I was preparing myself to reach some higher levels. And I didn't really know what that was, you know. I was really just a student on the journey exploring. And uh, I think some of them, I made some really dumb decisions, but um, I guess it was all meant meant to be along the way. So away I went to Egypt and I had not really ever had a calling to go to Egypt. I never studied it or yearned like a lot of people just, you know, that's their dream trip. But I knew I was going on a spiritual pilgrimage. So I found this gal who took us on a group tour. I was there for two weeks. And I have to say that, you know, I, I really didn't get it because I started hearing things like I was in the Abydos temple and I was meditating quietly in one of the rooms of the temple. And all of a sudden I started hearing what I, I can say to the best of my English vocabulary would be celestial music. It was incredible. It was almost like a language that I never heard before, and yet I understood it. So sometimes I think, was that angels singing? Was it cosmic, um, you know, beings or masters? Right. I don't know. Yeah. I, I remember going out into the temple and asking the guards, have, have you can you hear the music? And they just ushered me out. <laughs> um, I asked the tour guides, had, did you guys hear the music? Everybody looked at me and shrugged their shoulders. Nobody knew what I was talking about. And this kind of thing started continuing throughout my journey in, in the two-week journey in Egypt. Not just, I remember seeing, not just inside the temples, but other places too? Well, I remember being in a museum and watching, walking by one of these giant granite statues. And it was like they winked. And I'm like, am I hallucinating? I mean, that is bizarre. And... So the little things like that continued to happen. And I just sort of shrugged it off. And I really didn't engage with the concept of Egyptology. I just kind of thought it was another myth or story. I continued my journey after the group went home. And I had made friends with an Egyptian. So I went back to Luxor. And it was outside the Valley of the Kings. And I was searching. <laughs> I was searching for antique beads for i'm sorry and for antique bees like the the, beads. the insects Be that fly no no little beads to make oh, jewelry because i was a jewelry designer <laughs> oh okay. so i wanted something of an antiquity that i could incorporate into some of my designs oh. and so my friend helped me connect with one of his friends and so away we went and they showed me the beads and I came back the following day, and this was the day that I was ready to journey home back to uh, San Diego. And um, they brought the beads out, and I looked, and I loved them, and came back, this, pardon me, I came back the second day to pay for the beads. Okay. And they, when you purchase something there in the Middle East, you don't just pay and go. You share stories, you listen, you talk, you visit. Oh, how nice. Yeah, there's a real exchange, and that's a cultural um, opportunity just to, you know, it, it's, it's gentil, I guess you could say. It's <laughs> a way to bond and connect. So normally they would bring out Coca-Cola or uh, water or tea. And in my case, I don't know why they did this for me, but they, they were, I was a special guest and a special friend. So they brought out a joint. Okay. And Great. I'm not a smoker, right? <laughs> okay. There's a lot of people that are and have no issue with it. Well, I, I got to tell you, Russell, this happened in 98. So that's almost 30 years ago right oh. now, or is that 20 years? I lose track of time now when I'm doing this work, but I had judgment on it. And because I'm not a person that engages in that. I've tried it a few times. It never really did mm -hmm. anything to me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I don't smoke. And so they st started to pass it around. It comes to me and I said, no, thanks. You know, I don't smoke or I'm not interested. And oh my gosh, you know, they just, ah! 
yeah, you know, they'd sort of exploded in their Arabic Egyptian way. I insulted them. Oh. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, I'm the only girl here. What am I going to do? You know, I, I, you know I, I was scrambling in my mind, was racing. And then I thought, well, you know, I've tried it a couple times. I, I best be polite and gracious. So if I do, then, um, you know, it'll just blow over and away we'll go and everybody will be happy, right? right? Yeah. Because when I had tried it in the past, nothing ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, don't waste it on me, guys. You know, <laughs> enjoy your, your deal. So, and keep in mind, this is illegal for them. Oh, it is. You know? oh, and okay. uh, yeah, so it was highly illegal. It's not, it's not condoned. So anyway, it, the joint went around. There must have all of a sudden appeared like 10 or 12 people in the room guys and uh the joint passed around and it was time to go and i couldn't get up my legs were frozen my arms were frozen and i was sitting in the chair the only chair in the room and everybody starts laughing at me <laughs> and i'm thinking nice. <laughs> well they could see that something was going on and i didn't really understand what was going on so what happened was i had put my hands out thinking if I just get some water, I could, I saw myself standing behind myself. And in, in, in a nanosecond, I could see everybody's life story. Like I was at, you know, Circuit City watching 10 different televisions, and all these different movies were playing. And, and, and it was, it was all happening so fast, I couldn't comprehend any of it. But it was like an instant download, you know, and I thought, if I just put my hand, some, get some water in my face, I will not leave my body because I was going back and forth, back and forth. Oh. And next thing you know, I do believe they poured some water, but it didn't get to my face. And I started climbing some stairs. And it was like everything went black. Then I was climbing the stairs. So I was climbing stairs and I could see these beings, these they looked like people from ancient times dressed in costumes. Hmm. And, and, and the, the staircase went quite high. And, and I thought to myself, well, isn't this strange? Well, why are they greeting me? And it was like they were greeting me and welcoming. They knew me, but I didn't know who they were. I got to the top of what appeared to be the staircase, and it was almost like everything turned into a mist. Oh. And then at the same time, a giant golden ball of light. And it was as if there was this communication with, I would say to you, there was a being or an entity or my angel, but I didn't get a facial reference. There was no body in terms of, uh, you know, what we know in human terms, mm -hmm. but a vast um, communication. And I was told that I was going to have a tour of the all that I couldn't stay there, but I was going to be accessing parts and places that I wouldn't be able to comprehend, that I wasn't supposed to understand at all, and that it was way beyond me in, and the best I can say, in, in an alternate dimension. Oh, when, when you say the all, you mean like A-L-L? -L? Capital A, capital L, capital L. So it was a vastness of not only the universe, but all that existed uh -huh. to, to, would be to the best I can explain it. And um, that I would be gathering some truths to bring back with me. And that, again, I couldn't stay there. And it was, it was like I was teleported into this realm. Uh, <laughs> it was a building. And it was the most beautiful, perfect, sterile, absolute, uh, uh, geometrically, numerically perfect. And that sounds weird to describe a building, <laughs> but, and, and a beauty that I could perceive in that. And it was the strangest thing because I'm looking at this building kind of wondering, what? This is beauty um but but the, the geometrical perfection is what i was more or less stepping into um then i was emerged merged into what felt like a boardroom oh. of 
approximately 12 persons. They weren't male, they weren't female. They were all dressed alike, and they were like a, something like a tuxedo. And their heads were glowing. And there was this glowing light around their heads, and it was as if a lid opened on the top of their head. So the top of the head opened, and something like it stood up at the back. And it was like there was these beams of light that were transporting or tel- communicating to me information. And it was like every one of them instantly downloading information, everything that I needed to know, the vastness, complexities beyond my intellectual comp- com- comprehension. And, you know, to this day, I believe more and more information is being downloaded. It was sort of a nanosecond instantaneous download. Oh. They didn't communicate verbally. Mm-hmm. There was no, um, just, I just knew, I just knew stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was almost like light more than there was structure to it. Mm -hmm. And after that, it was like an instant moment where I was found myself standing in front of a vast doorway. The doorway was massive. And then on either side, it was a hallway that extended into what looked like infinity. Oh, And I didn't know where I was. And I think over the years, I've finally started to put the pieces together that I was entering into the Hall of Records or the Acacia, the records or the place where all information is stored. Mm -hmm. So I was standing there and it was as if this being was still standing behind me. And I, I moved forward. I was told, you can enter any doorway that you choose. but you can't stay. Oh. And it, there was a stillness and a, and a magnificence and a perfection that I can't quite articulate, honestly. So did you go in any of those doors? Funny you would ask. <laughs> I went to the first door on my right. It seemed easiest and it was gold. <laughs> and and, and as I, I didn't walk in. I just was in. Oh. Into a space that was like, again, it's so difficult to articulate. The best way I can describe it was a moving kaleidoscope of color, of, of geometry, of numbers, of complex compositions. And I, I, it was warm. It was, it was comfortable. It was safe. It was the most loving place I can imagine being wow. probably like being in the womb of a mother. Wow. It sounds wondrous. And wondrous is a great word. And I, I remember asking, where am I? And this voice said to me, this is the fabric of all creation. Hmm. This is love. Oh. And that was dumbfounding to me because what do you mean love? and the fabric of all creation. So I think to this day, Russell, I struggle with comprehending that in the human form. You know, it's, it's such a vast notion. I was told that this was the glue. This was the magnetic force that created and embodied and permeated all things. Wow. All plants, all rocks, all, all, all air, everything, so, everything that existed. So did you happen to go into any of the other doors? I did. Oh my gosh. I was, I, you know, just as I was there and feeling this and, and it was like going, oh yeah, I could stay here forever. I was like, thump, outside the yeah, door. Yeah, sure. Why, why would I'm you like, leave that place? <laughs> <laughs> That's like wanting to, not wanting to leave the womb, I guess, right. you know. And, and then I walked across the hall to this vast corridor to this other room and it was a pink door. And I merged into what looked like a very opaque green energy. And I stepped into that and merged with the green energy. And this is where it was almost like a life review and showing me where all my emotions and all of my pain emotionally was stuck in my physical body that created disturbances, that created illness, that created, you know, all my challenges. And that I needed to learn how to 
release those emotions, emotionally detox myself, and also the physical body. I was also shown how much and how important physical detoxification is of the human body, that my digestive system was probably the most critical part of what I needed to focus on. So that was sort of it in a nutshell of what I do today. I mean, I came back with such a strong, profound awareness of this is what needs to purge is emotional toxins Mm -hmm. as well as physical toxins in order to maintain health and to grow into being, you know, a lot of people probably raise an eyebrow if I said superhuman, but I truly believe we're here to create miracles. Mm -hmm. And every single thing we do is, is a creation whether it's a thought or an action, activities. We're here to connect with this life force of what we are. And everything is, and that's love. So was that your near-death experience, or was that something different? No, that was definitely the near-death experience. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not savvy with the drug experience or what happens. And I came back, I you know, had full batteries of tests to try and understand what happened to me. But that, that whole experience lived with me. From that moment, I started to see, you know, uh, statues moving. I could hear and see things that other people couldn't see or hear. Mm -hmm. So it opened up psychic abilities within me and healing abilities that I struggled with for quite some time when I returned to the States. I had to learn, one, what happened to me. I didn't know that was a near-death experience. Some people might have called it an out-of-body experience. Some people said, man, you were stoned (laughs) and you were really having hallucinations and that wasn't pot. Well, you know what? Everybody can speculate, but the, the, what I could see, I mean, I journeyed back from Luxor that day to Cairo, Cairo to New York, New York to Atlanta, Atlanta, San Diego. You, you actually got on a plane after that? Yeah, my friend escorted me. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I, I couldn't walk for a while after that whole thing. And they gave me juice and yogurt and orange because they felt like I was dehydrated. And, um, and so because it wasn't hallucinogenic, I was dehydrated and I started the story with, I was detoxing like for weeks before that. Mm -hmm. So there could have been some chemical or, um, even amino acid or enzyme imbalances that triggered that Mm -hmm. because I understand more people die of dehydration actually than probably drug overdoses, you know, that people just don't even know they're dehydrated. So I don't really know what the trigger was of that, Russell, but I came home, I had a full battery of tests. I never smoked another joint (laughs) or went here anything ever since. And I can't, I can't even be in the room with people smoking because I'm so sensitive. Um, Could it been my spiritual advancement and my body was prepared to take a journey that most people never do when they're having a couple topes? You know, it's, it's, it's a complicated question that I'll never know the answer. But the moments and that experience have stuck with me ever since can tell you this, it's changed my life. Oh, are, are you continuing to have more new experiences or, or new insights or new input of information from that source? I believe that that has triggered um, ex- Banded healing abilities. Mm -hmm. Um, My clairvoyance uh, was definitely turned on high. Um, I see and know things that a lot of people never know or believe. Um, It's not always fun knowing things and seeing things. I'm able to see and heal other people's bodies and guide them on journeys where they need to go to heal themselves. And so I think that's definitely been an activated part of who I am. But truthfully, I understand that everybody is spiritually, um, well, let's call it psychic or clairvoyant and clairaudient. So once we understand, when we get into alignment, and that's where I guide people to understanding, to opening up to their natural abilities, we're all of those things. And we're powerful creators if we're in alignment. Mm -hmm. And that was my journey to get into alignment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is the stepping stone to becoming a greater person, more aware and awake and and manifesting on steroids, you know? (laughs) Yeah. 
That's certainly a, a more than an, a fascinating and interesting uh, experience that you described. And what I find is fascinating also are the titles of your books, because I think there's a lot behind those titles that you have. Like, for, for instance, one of your books is titled Wake Up, Shift Happens. So I'm very interested in your usage of the term shift there. So can you, yeah, can yeah. you tell us what your thinking is behind that? Well, you know, I was trying to reach out and connect with people to, to understand that there was a lot more happening around us in our cosmos, in our, on our earth. You know, there's massive shifts going on and um, a lot of people are, are, are waking up, yes, but many are not. And, and some people are going through these crises, you know, job changes, divorces, relationships, massive, massive life changes, bam, 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 a lot. And I believe these are stimulus to make a shift, to create massive change in our lives. And it's happening globally. You know, there's not, it's accelerating and we're sort of being nudged as a consciousness to embrace that and to understand what it is to not to be frightened and to go deeper perhaps to untake it, you know, to where it needs to go rather than just going, Oh yeah, that was a cool experience or, you know, yeah, I heard somebody had something like that before, but embrace it and, and use those experiences to enhance your life, mm-hmm. to expand where, you know, explore places where you've no man has ever gone right. before perhaps right like you've described and that you've lived through and now is a big part of your work it's magical it's transformational it's exciting it's an adventure you know and i couldn't have made this stuff up and still to this day visions when i work with one to one with clients and my students in my uh, making miracles intensive training um, i am there guiding people to have these magical amazing experiences without a near death experience you don't have to go the hard way <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yeah you don't have to do like i did so all right so let's talk about another one of your books it's titled um Manifesting Miracles 101, The Art of Being in the Flow. Can you tell us what that term, the flow, means in that book? Because I, th- I think that flow is a, a really important spiritual concept um, because there's a lot of things going on in the universe around us that we can feel, that, that we can participate in. And so to me, there's, there's a flow that goes on. You know, there's been a lot of buzz around this, the secret and the law of attraction. And, you know, then I remember hearing, I've been in the zone before, right? And I've had these moments of where everything was flowing or working easily without effort. There was no struggle. And so what I realized was people needed tools, like I did, to to create on purpose. And when we get our energy at when we get our energy flowing in a particular direction, meaning when we're in alignment with ourselves, we get into a flow. It's like a river of creation. There's no dams. There's no blockages. And that's when we know it. We're in this flow. And so the book is sort of a culmination of 17 years of mentoring other clients and the tools that I taught them. So it's a, it's a, Reader's Digest version, if you could, um, but it's very specifically laid out. If you practice the guide meditations and the the tools that I recommend, you will get in your flow. You can't help it. You can't help start manifesting without effort. It is natural, and that's what we're here to do: be in alignment. That's that's fascinating. So, if somebody wants to get involved in that. Um, how do how do they do that? Do they read your book, or should they speak with you, or can they get in touch with you? How does that work? I always encourage people to give me a call. Let's do it the old fashioned way, right? In connecting, um, I offer a breakthrough session for people that want to take a step forward and really don't know where. Everybody's so unique, and that we need to really discuss what would be their best next step. And so, I have on my website. Uh, amirahall.com, there's a, a tab at the top called Get Started. And that's a perfect place where you can 
understand a little bit more about me and the work I do and where there's a link where they can get a breakthrough session. And that's where getting some insight from me, I can share some insight on where they're stuck and where they're, they should take their next step. Okay. That, that's fantastic, Mira. Thank you. And I'll put the link to your website in the show notes for this episode so that listeners can find it. So you've already told us about how people can contact you. Um, did you give us your website? www.amirahall.com. And that's Amira with two H's and two L's. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, it's been great hearing about your insights and your amazing experiences in your very interesting books. And thank you very much. Thank you for all that you're doing and sharing the light so that other people can open to their wisdom and adventure of spiritual exploration. Thank you for listening to this episode of Spiritual Fizz. Our website is located at spiritualfizz.com slash podcast. Please support us by subscribing to this podcast on iTunes and tell your friends about us. We look forward to being with you next time when we talk more about the connection between the spiritual and the physical worlds.